Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to learn about type conversion functions in Microsoft Access, why they're useful, and what you might need them for. Today's question comes from Charlotte in Raleigh, North Carolina, one of my Platinum members. Charlotte says, I get a spreadsheet from one of my suppliers and dates are formatted YYYYMMDD. I see this a lot. After I import them into my database, they come in as text. How can I get them into a normal date field? If I try something, if I try importing them directly into a date field, I get a type conversion failure error help. Yeah, that's going to happen because Access doesn't recognize that as a valid date format. So we just have to do a little massaging with some uh, string functions to make that look like a normal date and then actually convert it to a date using one of the type conversion functions. What are the type conversion functions? Well, that's these guys. C bool, C byte, C cur, C date, C double, C decimal, C integer, C long integer, C single, C string, C variant. Say that 10 times fast. Those are all the different data types that you can convert to in Microsoft Access. And these work in your queries, these work in your forms, your reports, these work in VBA, and they work pretty much everywhere. Now, this is going to be an expert level class. I consider expert between beginner and developer. So we're not going to do any VBA programming today, although you can use these functions in VBA. But you should know a little bit more than the basics. You should know how to use calculated fields in queries if you don't watch this video. You should know how to use the string functions to get pieces of a string. In this video, we're going to use left, right, and mid to get pieces of that date and align them correctly. And I am going to be using the ISO date format, which, uh, Charlotte, your, your data is coming in very close to this. This is the best date format. No matter where you are on the planet, ISO makes the most sense. Year, month, day. You don't got to worry because I'm in the U.S. I got a lot of students that are in the U.K. And you guys do, you know, day, month, year, which does make more sense than the U.S. version of month, day, year. It's dumb. So uh, to get around all those problems, I switched to the ISO date format a while ago. This is the best thing to use. I use it, you should use it, so go watch this video. All of these, by the way, are free videos. They're on my website, they're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them if you don't know any of this stuff and then come on back. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can download off my website if you want to. And let's just take any one of these tables. It doesn't matter, let's use the order table, all right? And let's just put a new text field in here that will represent what we imported from our spreadsheet, okay? So I'll call this uh, imported date, and that'll be a short text field. Because what happens a lot of times is when you import data, um, like from Excel or a text file or whatever, if Access doesn't see that as a valid date, it will import it as text. And that's fine. Leave it as text in your database, and then we'll just massage it and convert it over to a date value. All right, save that. Let's go into here and put some actual dates in here the way that they would come in from our sheet. So we'll do 2023, 1023, 2021, 0101, 2022, 1231, whatever. Put a couple things in here. Let's 2020, uh, 05, 06. Make sure they're valid dates, of course. 1999, 07, 08. All right, whatever. We got enough. All right, so that's how it's being imported from our spreadsheet. We'll save that. We'll close it. Let's make a query, create, query design. I'm just going to bring in that ordered table. Bring in our field we just made, imported date. Now, so I don't have to keep referring to it as imported date. I'm just going to call it D. Okay, that's we're going to alias that. That's what it looks like. All right, D. All right, and if I run that real quick, that's what we got. Let's get rid of the null values. So we'll come down here for a criteria and say is not null. If you don't know what null is, I got a whole separate video on that. I'll put a link down below. But now if we run it, we don't see any values that are missing dates. Okay, so what's the first step? Well, the first step is we're going to use the string functions to rearrange this and display it like a normal date. All right, a, a, a date that Access will recognize as a valid date. And since I'm using the ISO date format, it's pretty much in the same order. I just need the left four characters, and that'll represent the year. Then the middle characters starting at five and going two across. And we'll use the mid function for that. And then the right two. If you're using a different date format, if you're in the United States, you'll just put this first and then that, and then the year, and same thing for 
the European standard. All right, so we're going to come over here. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see this better. All right. So we're going to make a string date. We'll call it SD, my string date. Okay, and that's going to be the left of D comma four and a dash or some of you might be needing that, uh, whatever you need. I'm going to use a dash because I'm using, again, the ISO and the middle of D comma five comma two go five across and give me two characters. All right, the fifth character is where it starts and another dash and the right of D comma two. Okay, and that's how you build your date. All right, we're going to save it as uh, we'll just call this uh, convert date queue. And let's give it a good run. And there we go. Now, you can tell it looks good, right? But you can tell it's a string. How can you tell it's a text string? Because it's lined up on the left side of the cell. Numeric values, including dates, numbers, currency, generally line up on the right side of the cell. It's not a guarantee because there could still be formatting involved. I know one of my friends, John, just said a, an issue where it, it, it looked like it was a text, but it was number because it was lined up the other way. But that was just because of formatting in a form. Okay, and you can also format queries, too. So it's, it's a general rule that text is on the left, numeric values line up on the right. But there are exceptions. Now that we've got that as a text value, we can't do anything to it, right? We can't use it as a date in our other query criteria. We can't, you know, add values to it. So now we have to convert that string to an actual date value that Microsoft recognizes as a date. All right. So the next column, we're going to say new D, my new date or just new date, whatever. All right. The, the last one, so when I'm just using these as intermediary steps, I just give them little like, like initials because they're easier to use in other functions. When I get to the last one, I try to give it a good name. I'm going to be using this and my other stuff. All right. So new date is going to be now I need to convert that other date that I just built from text into a date data type. So it's going to be C date is my conversion function. And what am I converting? SD. All right, take SD, which is a string, and convert it to an actual date value. All right, save it, run it. There you go. Notice it lines up on the right side of the cell. Cell. This is in Excel, folks, the right side of the field. <laughs> okay, now, how can we test that and make sure it's a date? Well, let's just add one to it. All right, next field over here, we'll call it add one, whatever you want to call it, right? And this is going to be new date plus one. And as we know from our date math, if you take a date value and add one to it, that adds a day, right? If you add seven, that adds a week. But we'll just say, we'll just add one. Okay. Hit OK. Save it. Run it. And you can verify. There you go. Check this one out right here. December 31st, 2022 becomes January 1st, 2023. That is a date value. And now that it's fixed, all you have to do is create an update query. You can add, if you want to keep it in your order table, you can add another date field call it new date two or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Imported, corrected date, whatever. Give it a good name, right? Add it as a date field. Then use an update query to update that field with this value. And if you've never done an update query before, guess what? I've got a video for that too. I'll put a link to that down below as well. So that's pretty much how the conversion functions works. Now in this one, I just used C date, right? And this is PowerPoint. I don't know. So um, you can use all the rest of these. You want to convert to currency. You're dealing with a Boolean yes, no value. You're dealing with a double. Okay. You can use these different conversions to, to go to whatever format you need. I almost never use some of them like uh, C variant, C single, because I don't use singles. I don't use decimals that often. Um, I don't use bytes that often. But the ones you're going to pretty much use a lot are going to be convert to currency, convert to date, um, convert to long I use a lot and convert to string if you want to take a number and make a text string out of it. So there you go. If you want to learn more about these type conversion functions, I cover it in my Access Expert Level 26 class. This is part two of my comprehensive guide to access functions. You can see there's all the type conversion functions. We cover them and a lot of other stuff. We do some, we do some trigonometry in this one. We do some cool stuff in this one. And uh, I have a whole series of access functions, right? We got part one starts in Access Expert 25. We use string functions, logical functions. Then we do the math functions, type conversion functions, 
date and time, all kinds of stuff. I go through all the different, how many parts are there? There's part three, part four, there's the date time, part two. There's aggregate functions. There's all kinds of good stuff. Part six, looks like it's a six part series. There's lots and lots. You, you want to learn about the access functions? I cover all the functions, just like I do with my Excel classes. I cover all the different functions that are available. So check it out. And of course, members get discounts on all my classes and some free classes too. But there you go. There is your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I will see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members 
get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my Tech Help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any Tech Help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.